Hello, I'm Brock Springstead, and this is my tutorial on creating looping fractal animations using Illustrator and After Effects. I'll be using CS 5.5. I'll be keeping this very simple, and I'll be going fast so you can jump right in the programs and start creating these yourself. Anyways, let's get into it and begin with opening Illustrator. So I'm making just a canvas at 10 inches by 10 inches RGB. Now I'm going to start off with making a guy line. I'm just drawing a line from the top left to the bottom right corner. Then I'm going object, transform, rotate, and going at 5 degrees. I'll be doing this quickly, this rotation thing, by hitting Control c Control f to paste in place, then Control d to repeat my transformations. Okay, I'm going to just make that a little bit more pig and lock that layer down. Now let's start making objects in here. Um, I'll do some sort of 3D-ish here. So I'm using my guy lines to draw a depth of field, and I'm just using basic boxes. I have smart guides on, and you can turn that on and off with Control U. So right now I'm penning around my boxes. I'm not going to use the objects that I just used there. I'm just using those as a guideline. So with that guide, delete those, and now let's color this thing. I'm just locking that object down on top layer and coloring underneath. I'm going to start off with this nice green. Then I'll make the color a little bit darker here for the edge. So just double check it, make sure everything's good. Look great. Okay, let's group those together. Now I'm going to draw a square from the center as a guide rotation point. I'm going to control A to select everything, then copy, then paste in place, then go to transform, rotate, 45 degrees. I'm going to go Control C, Control F, Control D, and that cycle again. Okay, let's just make another object just to make this a little bit more complicated here. Um, yeah, I should draw from the center point. I don't know why I tried doing that, but anyways, not perfect. <laughs> so again, just using guides for these boxes and using that depth of field guideline by no built. going around the edges and making the outline again. It's going to be the exact same process as before. It's going to make this a little bit smaller. <clears throat> and use a nice yellow. I kind of ask my color scheme I usually choose in like a spectrum. So with green follows yellow in the rainbow spectrum that's kind of how I go. I'm just double checking to make sure that these lines are on point. There we go. Again, just drawing a guy line from the center. Control A to select everything. Control C. Then go ahead and rotate it. Then Control F and Control D. I'm going to delete all those guides kind of give this a bit more variation I guess I'll, I'll kind of just so you can have a visual reference as well I'll uh, make it a little bit more complicated and let me just save this file all right delete those guidelines we won't need them anymore in the back let's make this object a little bit more complicated before we bring it into After Effects so I'm just going to use those two objects that I made as a guideline again as well Just going around the outside here, and same process as already did twice. With everything I do, there's tons of different ways of doing it. This is just the way that I go by. Feel free to develop your own way. Like for each thing that you can do, there's at least a dozen different ways that you can do the same thing. Same goes in Illustrator as it goes in After Effects. This is just my way for now.
Well, let's finish off this object and gain. We want to build a guideline from the center. Select the objects, and this time I'm just going to reflect it to the right hand side. Oh, forgot the black headlines. Didn't mind that. Obviously, I'm not perfect. And that happens, so let's do that again. <laughs> yeah, it's under Object Transform Reflect. Most of the transform I do are under object transform, obviously. Alright, this looks good. Let's save it off. And close it up. And we'll be jumping right into After Effects. Okay, while this loads up, I'll uh, tell you. I'm going to go quick, obviously. My canvas is set at 1080 by 920, and I'll be using a, a frame rate at 30 frames per second. Could go 60 frames, but I'll just keep this simple and stick it at 30. The canvas at 10 inches by 10 inches in Illustrator comes into After Effects at 720 by 720. But with Illustrator objects, uh, drawings in general, they're all vector based, so the size really doesn't matter. And as long as you click this very special button coming in here, I'll, it will vectorize everything. So let's just import that main object one, clever name. I'm just doing merge layers. Drop in our timeline, make sure we click that continuously rasterize button under the mode section. So I'm going to start setting keyframes for scale at zero and at the end point, uh, wherever it is till it's off the screen. Okay, that keyframe set. Now I'm going to select both those keyframes. Yeah, got it. Definitely select both of them, go with keyframe assistant and then exponential scaling. That creates a nice scaling speed, I find. So now I'll go ahead and set some color changes here under effect, color correction, hue and saturation. Go ahead and set the keyframe button under channel range at one point and go to the end and set at three rotations. You can do it wherever you want. The higher it is, the crazier it gets. I want to set all these into a pre-comp. So up to this point, nothing should be a surprise for emotion graphic animators out there with experience in this. Um, but this is where the loop comes into play. What you have to keep in mind is that the beginning and last frames must appear to be identical. That's what creates a loop. So with that being said, hopefully you can wrap your mind around what I'm about to do here. I'm taking the main layer and I'm going to copy and paste that about 50 times. My rule of thumb is for every 30 seconds, there's approximately 50 layers I want to be using. Um, sometimes more, sometimes less. So once I have all those layers completely copy and paste in a row here, I'm going to take the second layer, I'm going to shift it over, and I'm going to go to towards the end and kind of visually line up where the next objects going to appear down the tunnel and it lines up about perfectly at 2 seconds and 15 frames it looks like which is a nice even number to work with so perfect um, knowing that now I'm going to select all the layers I'm going to right click on them and go under keyframe assistance again and now this time I'm going to click sequence layers so the math here now, I know that those objects line at 2 seconds and 15 frames. And I know my composition is 30 seconds in length. So 30 seconds minus 2 seconds and 15 frames comes out to 27 seconds and 15 frames, if that makes sense to you. So now I'm going to plug that number in here and click overlap. Now if I go, start, go towards the end here, you can see that everything lines up perfectly. So now the loop comes in here when I take this first layer, still with all the layers selected, I move it right to the beginning. Then I'm going to go down to the end and see where the last layer lines up at the end point. Everything underneath here now can just be deleted. It won't ever be seen, it doesn't matter. So now we trimmed it right up and we got a continuous loop if we've gone pan through here real quick. So now we just want to save off the file 
and we're going to be adding it into the render queue and then from there just plug in your render settings under format settings I'm choosing H.264 and then my bitrate 16 per second and level is 5.1 there's obviously no audio so I don't need that turned on so name it and then let's click render so after that very quick demonstration this is what we ended up with um, obviously very simple but hopefully it gives you an idea of the process and uh, techniques I use and you will be able to apply it to your own work look forward and see what you create um, if I went too fast and you get any further details or explanations just leave a comment below and I'm happy to get back to you hopefully this helped you out and if you like this tutorial check me out on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook all at Brock SR.